Hello everyone and welcome to this theory recording on basic laws. So in this section we're going to be covering the following. We're going to first look at the definition and application of Ohm's law. We will then look at the definitions and applications of your Kirchhoff's current laws and Kirchhoff's voltage law. We're going to look at branches, nodes and loops. Uh, we're going to look at equivalent resistances. That's going to be your series parallel calculations as well as your Y delta transformations. And then finally, we'll look at voltage and current division. So what is resistance? The resistance of any element denotes its ability to resist flow in electric current, and it is measured in ohms. If we look at the diagrams on the right hand side, first your typical resistor circuit, um, which will have your your pins so the resistor typically doesn't have a polarity and you would have your denotations of the actual values of your resistance depending on the colors of these bands you also have this uh, diagram which is a diagram of a resistor that's usually used for high power applications so whenever you have any power related applications, uh, specifically high power. So for your uh, operational amplifier um, designs, you would then use the high power resistors. The equation for resistance, resistance is equal to voltage over current. So this is your Ohm's law. And also based on the physical properties of the resistor, the resistance is equals to the resistivity times the length over the cross-sectional area of the resistor. Right, in terms of an open circuit, what would, we, what would we define as an open circuit? You, if you have a an input, this input can be connected to some black box circuit, meaning we don't know what's happening inside. And at the very end, you would connect your load now your load can be either an open circuit or a short circuit what do we mean by open circuit open circuit implies that the resistance of the load is infinite right so the resistance has a very high value we know that the resistance is equals to the voltage over the current right so the moment the resistance becomes a high value we know that the current should become a lower value so the relationship between current and resistance the current is equals to v over r so the higher the resistance the lower the current so if i increase the resistance to an infinite value it means that my current value must be minimum which is zero and this would be an open circuit what about a short circuit? If we look at this, a similar configuration, you've got your black box, and we now connect on the load, what we would define as a short circuit, which is basically a connection with a resistance equal to zero, right? What would happen in this case? In this case, we know that uh, the relationship between voltage and uh, current and resistance is Ohm's law again. So the higher the voltage, the higher the current, the, the higher the voltage, right? But now in this case, we know R is equals to zero. That will tell us that definitely the voltage must then also equal to zero. So the voltage across a short circuit must equal to zero. What is conductance? The conductance of an element denotes its ability to conduct flowing electric current. And it is also measured in Siemens. So what's important to note here is that the relationship between conductance and resistance is such that the conductance is equals to the inverse of resistance or one over R. What about Kirchhoff's current law? So with KCL, we know that the arithmetic sum of all currents entering and leaving a node is zero. 
This implies that the sum of the currents going into a node must equal to the sum of the currents leaving a node. So on the diagram, we have three nodes. And in these three nodes, we're all denoting the direction of currents. These are the, this is the same node, just with the indication of currents flowing in different directions. So at this point in time, it's important to mention that current flow can be in any direction. So you can choose current to flow in any direction. But what is important is how you express that current. The expression needs to be correct. So for instance, in the first node, or first example, we can say all the currents are going in. So the sum of the currents, I1, I2, and I3, will give you zero. So all currents are going in, no currents are going out. Right, in the first, in the, in the same node, we could have said currents I1, I2, and I3 flow in that formation. So I1 plus I2 go in and I3 go out. Therefore, I1 plus I2 gives you I3. Third scenario, we could have said, well, I1, I2, and I3 are all going out and no currents are going in. Therefore, the current going in would be zero, and the sum of the currents going out would be I1 plus I2 plus I3. It is important to note that any direction is fine, but how you express the current is important that it is correct. So if I have, for instance, a resistor, and I know that this point is V higher, or let's call it the voltage before the resistor. And this point is called the voltage after the resistor or V lower. And this is your resistance. Then if I'm looking for the current I1, which flows in this direction, then I should know that I1 must always be higher voltage minus lower voltage over the resistor, or the voltage before the resistor minus the voltage after the resistor over the resistance. So that will be VB minus VA over R. And I2, which would be in that direction, will be voltage before minus voltage after over R. So in this case, it will be VA minus VB divided by R. It's very important to ensure that your expression for current is correct, to ensure that your final answer for the current will be correct. What about Kirchhoff's voltage laws? So in KVL, the arithmetic sum of all voltages in a loop is zero. This implies that the voltage, the voltages produced by the sources will be absorbed by the resistive elements. We express the voltage as a function of the unknown currents in a circuit and then solve for the currents and any other unknowns required. So in a circuit, If this was Vs, this is R1, this is R2, we would express the voltages as a function of the current and the resistances. So if we call this I and we did a KVL in this loop, we would say we start off with Vs, so a negative Vs. I hit the negative part of the source first, moving in a clockwise direction, and then I will say because of passive sign convention, meaning that the source, the current moves from the positive of the circuit all the way to the negative of the circuit, that would imply that the polarity of the resistors will be positive. So plus I R1 plus I R2 gives you zero. In the event that you have a current that is shared or a resistor that is shared between two currents, then you will have a ratio of current, Ix minus Iy. So in an instance where you would have had a similar circuit, but you have some sharing of a resistor, so in this instance, then if you were doing a KVL in loop one, then this resistor R would be R multiplied by I1 
minus i2. And if you were doing a KVL in loop 2, then that resistor R will be multiplied by I2 minus I1. Always the reference current minus the other current. What is a loop? A loop is defined as any closed path in a circuit. So if we look at um, this example, we can call this a loop. We can also call that a loop. And then we can call the big one a loop as well. What is a mesh? A mesh is defined as a loop that has no other loops inside it. So we cannot call this big loop a mesh, but we can call the smaller loop a mesh and we can call the smaller loop a mesh. Thank you for watching this video and enjoy the course.